Now a quick word from our sponsor, Northwestern University's School of Professional Studies. If you've ever thought about a career in sports, check out the master's program in sports administration at Northwestern University. You can build your skill set and your network in evening or online classes. Find out more at sps.northwestern.edu slash sports. Good opportunity there for those who are looking to get in the sports industry, maybe work at a place like a Big Ten Network. All right, now TJ Hawkinson. Very pleased to be joined by Detroit Lions tight end TJ Hawkinson, eighth overall pick out of the University of Iowa in 2019. TJ, how are you, man? Good. How are you guys? Doing great. Just hanging out in Chicago still, uh, you know, kind of in, in self-quarantine here. I'm curious, being an NFL athlete, what's kind of been your protocol? Where are you hanging out and how are you staying busy and staying in shape? Yeah, I mean, I'm back in um, I'm back in Iowa right now, um, Sheridan more specifically. Um, but I've been doing um, some treatments and stuff out in Iowa City, so I've been transferring here and there. And but you know, Powerlift uh, they hooked me up really well, and uh, they they set me up with a, a nice squat rack and, and a bunch of weights. So uh, you know, it's it's been really good, and um, you know, I just appreciate them for you know giving me some equipment to help me stay in shape. So. Yeah, everything's kind of speculation, at least from the outside, looking in with the NFL and when things might get going. I know the schedule releases tonight, so that's kind of exciting. Uh, what's the communication been like just with the Lions and with the league and uh, just any information that, that you've received on when things might get going here? Uh, you know, you know as much as I do. <laughs> um, you know, this is a crazy time for all of us, and, you know, we're all just looking at Looking at it day by day, I think we're all trying to, um, you know, get better every day. And, uh, you know, the Lions is an organization. And then, um, you know, the University of Iowa, you know, I think we're just trying to take what they give us and, you know, keep moving forward. So, For sure. And you're getting ready for year two in the NFL. I'm curious, what's something you learned or experienced as a rookie that you wish maybe you could have told yourself or someone would have told you if you're sitting in that same spot a year ago today and you're getting ready to start your career? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing, and I said this when I was coming out, was just the knowledge of the game. Um, you're going against guys that have been playing for 10 years, um, you know, and you've got to catch up at that, at that mentality and that, that mental level. Um, so I think that's still the biggest challenge that I uh, am trying to, you know, catch up on this offseason is just the knowledge of the game and reading defenses and, and just being able to react faster than I was last year. So, uh, you know, I think I, I think I knew that last year. There's interviews where I was like, yeah, this is it. But, um, you know, that really showed up in the, in the year, and especially halfway and towards the end of the year, you know, just trying to be able to react as fast as those guys. So I think that's, again, the, the, the another, another challenge that, you know, I have to, have to come through with. So. For sure. And obviously Iowa is a huge platform with a huge fan base. But, you know, you get to the NFL, it's a whole other level. Uh, national audience, most popular sport in the country. So what's it been like kind of being on that stage? Like, did you know anyone who had you on their fantasy football team? Like, did you play with yourself in Madden? Was there any of those weird kind of through the looking glass experiences? Yeah, no, it's, it's been a, a, a different experience for sure. You know, there's a lot of different platforms that you're on now. And, uh, you know, my buddies, you know, were texting me last year during the season about fantasy and I was like, all right, yeah, you know, uh, but then the, the, the weirdest part was probably, uh, you know, a couple of months ago when I, I was playing against my buddy and he was the Lions and uh, he was yelling at me because my guy missed the ball or something. And I was like, yeah, that's my fault, you know. But so I guess that's been kind of the craziest, the weirdest experience was like, you know, playing playing against yourself on, on that or playing with yourself on that. And I guess it's, it's kind of been fun. So That's funny. I was going to say, if you didn't know somebody before who had you on their fantasy team, you do now. I, I had you on my team <laughs> last year, so – uh full disclosure. I love it. I love it. Absolutely. I need another one. Absolutely, yeah. Uh so out of curiosity, just with your first year in the books in Michigan in Detroit, you know, say the world is normal right now and you're you're hanging out there, and if your family and friends come visit you in the Detroit area, where are you taking them first, like as your tour guide? Like is there a restaurant or a sporting event or or somewhere that you take them to give them that Detroit experience? Um, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a couple of restaurants that I, I love Hyde Park. Uh, that's, in, that's in Birmingham. Uh, I took my parents there quite a bit, but, uh, you know, just the city of Detroit, uh, you know, just, just the history that they have. I mean, downtown is such a sweet area to be Ford field, um, you know, going around 
that entire area, you know, is, is just uh, super special. And, you know, there's a lot of history that, that goes into the downtown Detroit. Um, but, you know, just, just being in the city and being, you can tell it's a blue collar city. Uh, you can tell guy, you know, people that are, are there to work hard and, and they, they, you know, there's, they're working two, three jobs. Um, and, and just, it's like, like I said, it's a blue collar city. And that's, I think what the lines are all about is blue collar and, and we're going to put our, you know, nose to the dirt every day and, and work hard. So, um, you know, I think, I think the team and the, and then the, the city would lay well on that. And then, you know, that's kind of where, you know, when I, when I bring somebody around the city, that's kind of what I want them to see as well. So. Yeah. And you're right. That area around Ford field is really nice. Uh, went to a Tigers yeah. once and it was cool to walk around. Um, yeah. I want to get to your time in Iowa before we wrap up, TJ. And obviously, you know, I was got this feeling of being uh, TEU, tight end university. And, and before we uh, even talk about some of the it's great the – Yeah, absolutely. And before we talk about some of the tight ends that, uh, you know, you, you've joined in that, that history, I want to just kind of start at the very end of your career there and your decision to play in the bowl game um, and, and not forego it. I know, like, the trend, especially lately, has been for a lot of projected draft picks or people who want to protect their stock – to sit out. So what went into that decision to take part in that? Uh, I mean, it really wasn't much of a decision for me. Like I knew I was going to play in the bowl game either way. Um, you know, I think, I think there's a certain level of uh, respect I, I had to give to my teammates and just that, you know, Hey, I've been with you throughout this entire time. I'm going to be with you throughout this next game. Um, no matter what I plan to do or what, you know, what happens. So I think that was kind of where, I, you know, the, my teammates leaned on me and I leaned on them throughout the entire season. So it would have been kind of, you know, I didn't, I didn't want that, um, you know, that kind of, you know, slap in the face for them just to be like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm, you know. Um, but I think, I think it's also, um, you know, a cool experience uh, just to be in that type of environment. Um, you know, you only get to be in college so many times. Uh, you know, you only get to play so many games in, in college. Um, and, you know, then now it's, uh, you know, that, that, that really wasn't much of a decision for me. So I guess, I guess that's kind of where I leave it. For sure. Um, it's interesting, you know, going into your last year at Iowa, uh, forgive me for my ignorance, but when we were visiting Iowa City in your practice in the, uh, the August bus tour, I actually have met you before. We did a uh, we did a we did a video with you and Noah Fant, and we requested. You didn't let me sign the bus. Exactly. I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. I, that's actually my biggest uh, my biggest gripe with play, like players when they come to me and complain they're they're mad they're not on the bus, and I'm like I have nothing <laughs> to do with it. It's like some marketing company. But anyway, we sought out Noah Fant because he was the name that we knew just as you know yeah. as being kind of out, outsiders. And both of you guys did a video with us where you and Noah were kind of just doing drills. And um, I didn't know as much about you, so, so that's my fault. But what did, <laughs> what, uh, what did you learn from each other and from, uh, from Noah while you were there and, and you know, eventually leading to a really unique thing, being two first-round draft picks at tight end out of the same school? Yeah, no, I mean, having Noah at Iowa was the best thing for, I think, both of us. You know, we pushed each other every day. Um, he's such a great dude. Uh, I love Noah. I mean, he, he works hard. I mean, every day we went in and we, um, uh, you know, we really, we really pushed each other. I think that was the biggest thing is, um, you know, we, we both wanted to be great and we ended up being there together. Um, and that's, that's the, that was the coolest part of, of being at the end of it. And now looking back and it's like, man, we really pushed each other. We really wanted um, to be great, both of us, and um, you know that's kind of that's kind of what drove us every day. Um, so you know Noah and I have such a great relationship. I mean, he's he's a great dude. Um, you know, we're, I think we're going down to Nashville and training with with each other here soon. So um, you know he he's a great guy. I love that. Love him. He's doing well right now, and uh, you know we'll just continue our relationship. So awesome, yeah. And, and knowing you know the history of that position at Iowa I want to try a quick exercise real quick with, um, you know, building your ultimate Iowa tight end. Right. So from okay. the categories I'm going to give you are, uh, our hands, speed, size, blocking, and then overall personality. So I'll, we can go one by one. So like if you had to take any, any tight end in Iowa history and get their hands, uh, put them on the hands team, who'd you pick? Hank. Okay. How about speed? 
Speed. No, upright. He's pretty, he's pretty quick. <laughs> Overall size? Strength? Size, CJ Fedora was. Blocking skills? Um, you can pick yourself, by the way. See, I, 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 I would, but Dallas, Clark. Personality. There's too many grades. I can't, I can't be throwing my name out there when there's so many grades, you know? Understood. That's tight end you. There's too many. So the, the last one is personality. Which, which, uh, George. Which, I, I was, I was, you know, uh, do you know George? You know I've George? actually had him, dude, I had him on the podcast as like my third overall guest. We've done like 150 episodes. He was like the third person. And that was before he was obviously a star. It was, he was fresh out of Iowa. Um, he had just yeah. been drafted and he was awesome. And I was like, this dude is going to be a, a electric in the NFL. So, right. He turned out no, like, he's, he's hilarious. I love George. So, love hanging out with him. Just brings the energy. So, yeah, he, he was an awesome guest. And uh, I figured when I put the personality clause in there that, that <laughs> probably be the one. Uh, staying on the Iowa uh, topic and some of your teammates there, who was the toughest guy in defense that you went up against in practice? Um, toughest guy I went off the defensive practice. So there's a few, I got a few stories with it. Um, uh, I went up against da or, uh, Desmond, my freshman year, um, red shirted. And I just tried to go balls to the wall every day and, and scout cause I was a scout team guy, you know? And so he covered me all the time. So he was, he was tough. I just tried to, you know, make him better and do whatever, but he actually screwed up my pinky. If you can see that my fresh, my freshman year, he screwed that up. And so that's, that, that was, that's one guy. And then probably the other one, uh, Josie Jewel, obviously he was just super physical. Um, and both of those guys are great guys, you know, and I love going at some of practice. They just made me better. So. Yeah. The pinky thing is, is interesting, especially with football players. Like we have a, uh, one of our, our analyst on TV at BTN is Joshua Perry. And when I first mm -hmm. met him and whenever I shake his hand, he's got like the screwed up pinky, kind of like you. Right. Yeah. You can't like straighten it kind of. It's like a little weird. Just a badge <laughs> of honor for, for football guys. For sure. <laughs> uh, you know, speaking of guys and defensive backs, you know, you might have to go up against, you guys got Jeff Okuda uh, out of Ohio state with that third overall yep. pick 2020. When, if you haven't already, when are you going to give him a hard time about that 2017 game? It's the Buckeyes. That's, that's what, oh, you know, it's coming. When, when I see him, it's coming. So, <laughs> no, he, he, uh, he, I'm super, we're all, I think we're all super excited about that pick. Um, you yeah, know, he's going to fit the mold well. So, uh, but yeah, no, he's definitely going to get something for that. <laughs> that Ohio State game, I remember that game vividly. And it, that was kind of your, uh, that was like a coming out party for you, right? You had a pretty good game, a couple touchdowns. Uh, how did your career arc, I guess, change after that, if at all? Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of gave me the confidence to, uh, you know, that I was able to play at that level. And, you know, I had been playing throughout the entire year, but I think that game I was just, you know, ready to go. Um, and, yeah, I mean, that, that, was, that was a fun time for all of us. You know, I think Noah had two. I had two. Uh, you know, and it was, it was kind of the tight end you kind of showing up. So, Josh Jackson snapped, I remember. One-handed. Right. That was yeah. Uh, um, all right. Speaking of some of those Big Ten connections in the in the league, uh, Purdue's David Blau made his lines in NFL debut last year. I thought he did a pretty good job. You know, I'm a killed it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a Bear, I'm a Bears fan, and watching him come out on uh, Thanksgiving and score mm -hmm. immediately in front of the entire country is pretty cool. He also has been on the show, so uh, nice. another, another friend of the pod there. Um, but how yeah. much did you guys interact, and did you talk about your your uh, Big Ten battles at all during his time in Detroit? Yeah, Dave is such a great guy. I mean, we, we talked about a few – I mean, the last year, 20, 2019, when they, when they beat us at their place. Um, and then we, we had – when they were playing last year, we had a couple – we had some bets down. But um, Dave, Dave is such a good guy. I mean, he, he killed it at the Lions last year. And, um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of cool to have those Big Ten connections. Uh, it really is, you know, so in the league and then just being able to talk about different different games in the past. So that's kind of what we had. He could have bragged about uh, getting to sign the bus because he, he's another guy who got to sign the bus. Oh, he got to sign it. Wow. All right. Yeah. 
No, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed about that. <laughs> I, I love how that's a thing. Like, I, I'm going to have to take that back to our, uh, our internal <laughs> marketing people. I think, I don't think they realize how big of a deal it is, but uh, I'm waiting. I'm still waiting to sign it. I'm excited about it. I know. So. Maybe we'll make, we'll have like an alumni <laughs> bus. We'll do a tour. Um, staying on your QBs, you know, I saw a video recently of a Matt Stafford doing a zoom interview kind of like this. And I can't remember the, uh, the platform it was on or, or what show it was, but he was doing these advanced like multiplication tables off the top of his head. Like the, the, the host would say like, what's 2,560 times 3,480. And he was able to do it like a savant, like seamlessly in his head. Like, did you know he could, he had those skills and, and was some sort of math wizard? Uh, I mean, Matthew, he's probably one of the smartest dudes I've ever met. I mean, really, he, uh, I mean, I just remember talk, you know, being in the film sessions with him last year and he, you know, he would be like, oh yeah, play 23 on, you know, 2018, whatever. And you're like, what, wait, what? <laughs> like 23, we'll play 20, you know, and you go back and look and you're like, yeah, that, that was the, yeah, that was play 23, you know, what he's talking about. And he, uh, I mean, his, 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 the way he works and the way his brain works, I mean, is, is, is phenomenal. Like, it's crazy. It's, it's, it's awesome to be a part of that. So, Does he have any other, like, hidden talents? Like, is he, can he juggle or do something else that's just unfairly talented at? <laughs> I'm not I'm not 100% sure. He's, he's not – he doesn't really flaunt all that stuff usually, but he's, he's good at whatever he does. I mean, that's the truth. I don't think he's bad at anything, so <laughs> – yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, man, like, can you just leave some skill for the rest of us? Like, you're already an NFL starting quarterback. <laughs> um, and you know, people that see numbers like that always get on my nerves, too, because I've never been able to, like, visualize numbers or math like that. So that, that was crazy when I saw him do that. Right. Uh, all right, TJ, last question. What's kind of been your main non-football hobby or activity during all this uh, – isolation i guess like you have any new shows are you playing video games i know some people are cooking what's kind of been keeping you busy besides yeah cooking? i'm not a huge video game guy but uh when i you know i try i do every once in a while you know i've been playing a little 2k and some fortnite and some you know call of duty but i, I really I, I really don't play it that much uh i mostly like being outside so i've been sneaking on the golf course and you know trying to play you know, some golf and, and doing some stuff. And then the MJ documentary comes out, you know, so now he's really got me trying to lose some money in golf, you know, but uh, no, that's, that's kind of been the main, the main hobby that I've been doing. So. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a Bulls fan. So I've been absolutely just uh, devouring the MJ it's, doc and it's awesome. It's sweet. It really is. I mean, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch on so, you know, it's something to look forward to right now for sure. Definitely much needed. But, uh, hey, TJ, I appreciate you, you taking some time, man. It was a lot of fun. Uh, best of luck, and, and hopefully, you know, things get back to normal and you guys can get back at it soon, man. For sure. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one.